Okay, I think we're ready to start the show. Yeah. Today's subject is going to be glass windows and glass doors. Do we have enough to talk about? Mm -hmm. oh, I think we have so much yeah. to talk about. I mean, just even from my standpoint, the design, yeah. how these modern homes are really changing windows. They're large and yeah. different sizes, and, and it's just really awesome to wow. see. Mm -hmm. And there's so much history. These date back farther than we can even imagine. So there's a lot of history when it comes to windows. Yeah. Hey guys, what I'm really excited about is this brand new 8x8 eight eight oh, sliding oh, glass it's door. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it is so beautiful. I just hope nobody tries to walk through the glass. I'm yeah. you. Hey Luke, Lonnie talked about the sizes, but the window shapes are getting to be so different and unique. I'm amazed our framers can make this work. Right, yeah. and bigger and wider, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. One of the things I'm excited to talk about with Luke is we're going to dive into the energy efficiency of our windows. So whether mm. it's winter or summer, the Anderson High Performance Low E4 glass greatly improves the energy efficiency of our windows and patio doors compared to the dual pane glass that's yeah, on the market. You know what? Right I think we're ready to start, so yeah, let's get let's our go. first wait, segment going, right? Wait, wait, wait oh, Izzy, wait, you said you were going to bring me that prop up, that jar of sand. I need that for my segment. Okay, I got Quick, get that run, yet. hurry! Oh, 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 no. Glass there, Izzy. Oh. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Every time Izzy's on set, I always keep the uh, first aid kit handy. That is going to show a mark. <laughs> wow. Welcome to Between the Studs. We are Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving Northern Indiana, Northwest Ohio, and also parts of Southern Michigan. We have been building custom homes for almost two decades, and we're really passionate about what we do. So join us today as we explore the processes, the trends, and also tips that characterize today's new home. Thanks for watching. Okay, I think we're ready to open up the show. Remember, today's subject is glass doors and glass windows, and we can make a case the windows and doors are probably the most important component of a new home today. Absolutely. And Izzy, where's... Oh, there he is. Oh, my gosh. Oh, buddy. Oh. 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 Oh, he's not. Guys, I, I, I just tell you, I don't feel so good. Oh, oh, he doesn't yeah, sound good. I've got it on the wall. There's some Advil downstairs. Why don't you yeah, Ooh, yeah, go back. get it? Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Around, uh, around okay. the glass. Got it. Yep. Got it. Okay, we still got to open up the show yeah. without him. But hey, what are we going to talk about today? What's your subject? Well, you mentioned glass. Let's talk about how glass is made. It's fascinating. Oh. It takes three days. They heat it up to over 3,000 degrees. It's yeah. fascinating. Wow. I, lo I love talking about just the different types of glass that go into these windows and the different styles of windows and how we incorporate them. Yeah. Glass inside of a frame we call it a window. Let's talk window history today. Oh yeah. You know one of my favorite things about window history is the first glass is really found in 3600 BC. Whoa. Wow. You know I really want to talk about color. Check it out. They actually have a color that's my nail color. I mean how perfect <laughs> Oh my gosh. Come on, who would like that with their windows? Wow. And windows are so important when it comes to the architectural style of a home. So we're doing a lot of modern homes, for example, right now, and windows are very important. Big, large picture yeah. windows, mm -hmm. big sliding doors, that's important. That's right, Elizabeth. And when we're talking about architectural styles and the different types of windows and doors, we have to talk about options. And when we're thinking options, we've got to talk about Anderson, the most trusted oh, yeah. name in windows and doors. And we're using a lot of different windows and doors, patio sliders in all of our homes. Well, I think this is going to be fascinating. Stay tuned. You are going to love this show. Everybody get their uh, parts that we're going to talk about, and well, let's start well, the show. Don't, 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 don't walk through the window. Yeah, that's perfect. Around. But I think we should check on Izzy. Okay. Now, Tony, when it comes to home building, probably one of the greatest discoveries, or maybe even an invention, has to be glass. Glass is one of the most important components when it comes to a house and has a very deep, rich history. We're going back to 3100 BC, BC is when the first glass artifacts have been found. They've also found some in ancient Egypt around 1500 BC. And it was right around 1 AD when they started learning how to blow glass and doing different things along those lines. It was in the roughly 100 years later is when the price of glass started going down and it was more used for the average consumer of those times. You gotta fast forward a couple hundred years after that for really the next big portion of it. And that was in 1608 when the first American glass company was founded here out of Jamestown. And then it was in the 1950s and 1960s that a lot of research went into glass and that was brought on by the Ford Motor Company. Mm -hmm. Now, you talked about some of the history. Let's talk about how we make glass today. And it was around the 1850s that really started to transform how we make glass today. Mm -hmm. Really, there's about four components in glass, but when you really shrink it down, it's really just sand that gets heated up, right? 
and it gets really hot. We're talking hotter than molten lava, 3,090 wow. degrees. Uh, but a couple other components that they add to it, so you got the sand, you have soda ash, limestone, and then they add that recycled glass. So it is important to recycle that glass because they do pull it in, they'll melt it down the same time. So you'll notice it has a few similarities with our concrete mixture, sand sure. and limestone in there. Uh, but the way it works is they heat this up, like we mentioned, they put all those components in a big batch, it gets melted down, it turns in and it looks a lot like lava. Then they roll it out onto a river of molten tin. Wow. So the tin and the glass are like oil and water. So the glass will float on top of it. And that's why they call it floated glass, floating glass. They'll float that right on top of the tin and they'll cool it down at that same time. So it really starts to get its form. Then they roll it out. They roll that glass out and they'll roll it out about a quarter of a mile long. Wow. And they'll continue that cooling process and they'll also stretch it out a little bit and make sure that they got the, uh, the thickness that they're looking for. And that's essentially how they make annealed glass. There's a couple other types of glass, but that's annealed glass, which is the most common basic glass that we see today. Really, we have four different types of glass from what you're talking about. We have the annealed, mm -hmm. we have the tempered, we have the stained and then we have the tinted, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. And uh, the tempered, we're going to get to that a little bit later, but that's essentially that safety glass that breaks into right. a lot of small shards. Uh, and then the, the tinted ones, we use those, for example, like on a lot of lakes or places where there's a lot of sun coming in, you tint those windows. Okay. People are using them on their windshields for their car, really help kind of lessen that, that sun's intensity. You know, the big thing we are talking about windows and doors today and that major component is glass and we can't wait to educate you a little bit more coming up. Well, Tyler, Tony and Luke gave us a great understanding of glass. You know, a little bit of history, composition, those kind of things. Let's talk about how glass has really revolutionized our business as home builders. Sure, Lonnie. And I think when we're talking about glass and how it's revolutionized building, we have to start with windows. And when we're talking about windows, you know, we really need to go back to the early 13th century when windows really started being implemented in homes. And when you look at a window, a window is really an opening in a wall, door, or roof that allows the passage of light, sounds, and air. And I don't know if you go back even further than that, they called a window where the word came from. One of the, one of the roots was wind hole, which is literally a hole in a wall that allowed sunlight or air to pass through. And they put the fur or whatever they might do to block that at nights, whatever, but that's kind of where it started. Right. With literally no glass, just a hole. That's true. And a lot of times, you know, with a wind hole, sometimes it's referred to as a wind eye, which comes from Old Norse language. So um, it's actually referred to as Vindagwa. So Vinder meaning wind and then Aga meaning eye. So that's kind of the history where we look at how it's translated through the years. But sometimes too, you know, even looking at windows, you know, we talked about how those openings are in a roof or a door or a wall. You know, we need to talk about glazing because glazing right. is a term that we use a lot today with windows. And you're going to talk a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, that's just simply the process of taking glass and putting it in a frame. Sometimes we call that a sash and that would be what we call glazing. Or some of us may remember reglazing windows, which is those old windows, you take the putty out, put another piece of glass in. But today we are hermetically sealing the window. Let's talk a little bit about how our windows are made. Sure, so when we're talking about hermetically sealing, we're really talking about like thermal panes of windows or glass. Like two sheets of glass then, and Correct. creating a barrier? Well, that barrier is actually filled with um, argon gas, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the show, but really that allows that heat to stay in the home. So even allowing some of that, um, that sunlight to come into the window, mm -hmm. really when we're talking about how it's revolutionized building, it's become much more energy efficient for people to have that type of glass in their home compared to years and years and years ago. You're right, and they have made windows so much better that today it would not be unusual to have a whole wall of glass or doors, glass doors that open, like the nano wall type of concept, made of glass. It's pretty impressive. Exactly, and another thing, if you want to impress you know, some of your friends or family, when we're talking about history of glass, we need to look at the Latin term fenister, which, mean, which is basically referring to a piece of glass in a window, which we later derive the term fenestration, fenestration, which is the arrangement of windows on the front facade of a house. So if you want to look at you know, a home down your street or in a neighborhood, let your friends know, hey, the fenestration of windows great. is really and, great. And at Greater Ridge Builders, we really look at the size of the windows and the placement of windows because fenestration is a very important design component of architectural you know, considerations in these new homes. So we do, we do look at it very, very closely uh, today. That's right.
Now, JR, we get to talk about one of the most exciting things when it comes to this episode, and that's tempered glass, or some people call it safety glass, and it has quite an interesting story of how it was developed. You want to get into that? Absolutely, it does. It's, it's funny, Luke. Glass has been around so long. There's been a lot of advancements just like everything else, but one of the biggest advancements was going to tempered glass. It was actually a mistake. So it, in the early 1900s, a French chemist was working in his lab, dropped a flask, the components and the, and the chemicals that he had inside the flask held it together when he dropped, and that was how tempered glass started. And then the first time that we really introduced tempered glass and used it was actually World War I. They took the gas mask, and that was the lenses. They saw how well it held up during combat, and they said, hey, let's start putting this in car wind, windshields, and it really evolved from there. I would have never guessed that early, 1900s, huh? Yeah. Now, when we talk about tempered, there's some areas that we have to have the tempered glass by code. Uh, and the reason they do that is for safety, because tempered glass breaks in tiny shards, whereas annealed glass breaks in very large chunks. And if you put your hand through it, it could cut you, you know, very deeply. So, exactly. example, a door behind us here. This door has almost a full glass door. That is a tempered glass door. Any door that maybe has side lights, those have to be tempered. Mm -hmm. Any window that is within 18 inches of the, the finished floor, that has to be tempered. There's some less obvious spots, like above a, uh, a tub. If there's a window there, that has to be, because people stand on that tub, they slip, they grab, you know, reach for something, they could put their hand through that, that window. So there's some areas like that that we really have to pay attention to. Same thing going down a flight of stairs. If there's a window there, that has to be tempered. There's also a few spots in the kitchen, correct? Yeah, there's some less obvious spots. The kitchen, like the, the oven, the mm -hmm. glass on the oven, the glass on the uh, microwave, and then some spots in the bathroom too. Uh, the shower door, again, walking in, you slip maybe on some water, you punch through that, it's going to break into those tiny little shards again. Yes, you still may get some tiny little cuts, but it's not going to be near the damage that it could be if it was annealed glass. Yeah, tempered glass is all around us, Luke, and a lot of people don't probably don't know where it's at. If they're not sure, if they got tempered glass at home, how can they check? Yeah, this is a stud tip for you. So any tempered glass has to have a spot where they can see where that's at. Look in any of the four corners, it's going to be etched in there. You have to look really closely. In this one here, it's in the bottom left. You'll see where it says tempered right on there. That way you can see if you have tempered or not. So Luke, we could try to describe glass all day, but I think the best way for our audience at home is to show an example of breaking these two types of glass. So as you can see, when we're breaking this tempered glass, the shards are small. They stay clumped together, less damage and less opportunity for someone to get hurt. Yeah. Now when you're seeing the annealed glass, you can see that they are much larger. Imagine if that were to fall on your foot, your toe. Uh, it just, it's from a safety aspect, it was revolutionary. So Luke, we're doing a remodel. I think we got a chance to break some glass right now, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've broken some intentionally and unintentionally. We can go down there right now There's and play. There's gotta be a few, right? We'll get our safety glasses there. All right, I like it. Now, Tyler, here at Granite Ridge, we feature Anderson Windows, which is the most recognized brand of windows. And I love bragging about these windows. And the things I love bragging about are the low E4. And I said four, that means there's four bullet points that I want to highlight on this. What's first? Well, first thing we're going to talk about, Luke, is argon gas. So a lot of people, they hear about high performance windows filled with argon gas. And these windows here are filled with that gas. And the reason they're filled with argon gas, it's actually denser than air. And what that allows is it allows the window to hold in, you know, the internal temperature of your house and then prevents you know those high UV rays from coming in so it's you're holding your internal temperature of the home which gives it a higher energy efficiency rating right and along with that argon there's the low E part that I mentioned that stands for low emissive that ties in with the energy efficiency because on the inside pane of one of those glasses there's a coat of that low uh, that low E and what that does is it helps reflect the UV rays so in the summer times it reflects it out in the winter time it keeps the heat inside and that along with the argon will cut the the cost 35 percent in the winter time 41% in the summertime, more efficient than dual pane. That puts more money in our homeowner's pockets. Mm -hmm. And you know, the other thing that I love about these windows, as you can see here, is this protective film. So this comes on both the exterior and interior of these windows. And you know, being in the field, especially on a new construction site, you're dealing with dirt, you're dealing with different elements that, you know, can get your windows dirty, but this actually helps keep them clean because it's a removable film, as you can see here, that we can take off at the end of construction. Better overall protects this window in the long run. Yes, yeah, so that was three of the points. The fourth point is maybe my favorite, and that's the titanium dioxide film that gets put on the outside of this. 
Glass, if you look under a microscope, has a bunch of tiny pockets in it. That kind of smooths the glass over, and then with the help of the sun, which activates the titanium dioxide, it will create 95% less spots, so the water spots that build up, and it will wash the windows every time there's a rain. Yeah, less maintenance is something that's really beneficial to our homeowners. So, you know, when we're talking about these high-performance windows, if you want to hear more about the information that comes with Anderson, you know, a quality name that we're putting into a lot of our homes, come into our office, ask to speak with a sales agent, a decorator. We'd love to cater what window would fit perfectly to your house. Well, at Granite Ridge Builders, there are two window styles that we use a lot. That would be our casement window and our double hung window. Now, these windows do lead to different architectural styles. So right here, we have a double window, double hung window, so it operates up and down both ways. And this is a popular option. Now, it does lead to a specific architectural style from our history. Well, the, the architectural style that we're talking about here would be a Georgian style, and the fenestration, again, I love that word, is the order of the windows and where they're placed. So the fenestration for a Georgian window double hung would usually be about five rank across the second floor. And it's a very symmetrical look, and a lot of times we will call it a 12 over 12 or a 9 over 9. So you'll have a grid pattern in here. Mm -hmm. That's because back in the olden days, they couldn't do glass this large. Yes. So they would have the grills and they would be individual pieces of glass. Now, nowadays it is a little bit different, but we yeah. can still go for that look. The other type of window, like I said, is the casement window. So this is hinged on one side and you crank it open. We'll do it in a lot of our homes. We'll have a double casement window so they're mulled together and we'll call those maybe a French window. So mm -hmm. you can open it out like a French door. One difference with Granite Ridge Builders is both of those windows do operate. Yes. And Italianate would be the style that it might be reflected with something like this. Italianate usually is going to have uh, thinner, taller windows. And again, so that would, that would uh, lend itself to this kind of a casement window. There's a lot of other styles when it comes to windows. Transom windows are one of those. Our ceilings are becoming a lot taller, mm -hmm. so we're doing a lot more transom windows because those are typically located above one of these windows just mm -hmm. to let more natural light in. Yeah, and modern style would kind of reflect that as well because we have so much glass in a modern style home, those transoms are just found everywhere. Awning windows are another term you'll hear. What an awning window is, uh, a lot of times it's located up high, so it could be above a garden tub or in a bathroom. Mm -hmm. So maybe about uh, four feet wide and two feet long to let in some natural light. Mm -hmm. Those open out, so you would crank that window out. And you had another one that I was interested in too, yes. a hopper window. Yes, a hopper window. <laughs> so this is similar to an awning window, but it operates differently. Mm -hmm. So in rooms, uh, when you want a large piece of glass, maybe that comes really close to the floor, you would have to temper that window. Mm -hmm. One way to get around to tempering a window is if you have your window and then you have a hopper window below it. So it looks like a transom or an awning, but it opens in, so it opens into the room. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference. And one last window would be a clear story window. These are windows that are highly decorative there to bring in a lot of light and a lot of style into a room. Usually located very, very high, which is why I don't favor them because I hate cleaning windows and boy, those can be difficult to clean. You're right, they are above your eye level and with modern being so popular right now, we're doing a lot of the clear story windows. They're a great way to let in more light and they really add a lot of drama to that room. So Tyler, Izzy and Elizabeth did a fantastic job in the previous segment kind of describing some of the differences between a casement and a double hung window. Sure. But the, really, the greatest debate between every homeowner when we sit down and design their custom home is how they're going to decide which window they're going to incorporate. So I think we're going to show them some of the different functioning aspects between these two windows, right? That's right, JR, but is it really a debate? Because we all know which one's better. Right, double hung. No. Casement windows. You think so? I know so. Okay. Well, let's 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 see if we can end this debate right now, once and for all. Okay. All so right. Let's start by how easy it is to open and close the window, right? Sure. So, like, let's let's get these open. Let's get some airflow going. So, okay. I mean, you're a big, strong guy, right? You should be able to get yours open faster, right? Well, I mean, I mean, I, you did open yours faster. Okay. But just this cranks out just as easy. Yeah. And the nice thing about this is when we're talking about design for all, you know, a casement window is actually a little bit better of a window in terms of, you know, handicap accessibility because it's a little bit lower. Do you see how high you had to reach on your window compared to how low I, I reached did. for the crank? I did, but I could do it with fingers. So if I have arthritis, 
have some issues like that, mine, I could make an argument mine's an easier window to open too. Sure. Now, in terms of opening a window, the next thing we really need to talk about is which one has better airflow. Mm -hmm. So I feel like casement windows kind of acts as a sail. It's got a larger footprint in the opening of the window. And so that way you're getting a lot more air. I mean, you've got a fixed window on your double hung window right there. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. And then in terms of airflow too, which one's easier to clean? You know, obviously I've got to pop off this screen. Yeah, I mean, you got to do a lot of extra work, right? I mean, all I got to do is pull these clips down, pull this out, I'm ready to go. I've already cleaned my window. Okay, well, I mean, that's one thing that I think most people don't realize too is obviously a screen on a casement window is on the inside of the window versus yours is on the exterior of the home. Makes and a huge difference. And that kind of leads into the next topic as from a curb appeal standpoint, which one do you think would look better? Well, my style of house, whether I'm doing Georgia and maybe even an Italian night home, I like that double hung. I like that sash across the middle. That's traditional in my style. Sure. Well, I think a lot of people like these casement windows because as you can see here, I mean, obviously there comes with a, with a screen on the inside, but people can choose to either remove that screen or just leave the large pane of open glass. But it's, it's a little bit harder to look out because this middle panel in the double hung window, that's really at eye level. So you're always going to have that obstructing your view. I get, I get, okay, all right, so you make a good argument there. You make a good argument. So what's the last topic you want to talk about? Well, I think the last thing we need to talk about is just options for our homeowners. I mean, really, the choice is theirs, right? Yeah, and the good news is, whether you like casement or you like double hung, even in today's style, people are doing a combination of both. So we may see if you like this look, it fits your lifestyle, and it fits the look of the home, you can do double hung on the front of the exterior, and do casement everywhere else. You could actually do a combination and get both these windows. That's true. One of the most underappreciated parts of a home is the window. The window is something that is not only seen on the outside, but it's also seen on the inside of the home. And you might just say, duh, but it's really underappreciated because when you pull up, the windows really do set the tone for how you feel about the house. And then once you get inside, they also reflect the, the experience on the inside of the home. Absolutely. And that's where specialty windows really make their mark on your home and the character that you want to present. So we're going to talk about a few of those specialty windows that are popular right now. We see the elliptical windows above front doors quite often and the one that I really love right now for the lake homes, the cottage styles, some of that nautical theme or the circle windows are really gorgeous. Some of the other styles that have been very popular in the past have been octagon and the palladian windows, uh, the half circles or circle tops. Those things have been something that have been a part of our uh, architectural style here for a long time. With this modern movement, we're seeing a lot of the shed style homes, and a lot of people like to follow the, the peaks of all of the vaults that they have going on. So you're gonna see a lot more parallelograms, some trapezoids, and even some pink pentagons with all of the great architectural styles we have coming. But beyond just the difference of shape, there's also specialty glass itself. Absolutely. So I love to talk about art glass. It sets the tone for the room. The art glass can have different colors, different lead styles. Frank Lloyd Wright used to use this a lot in his home to create that aesthetic of warmth and it changed the colors of the room. So you'll see art glass a lot of times in these bathrooms that we're doing with high windows to create a nice uh, aesthetic. You can use art glass interior as well. So that's something to definitely take a, into consideration when you're designing your home. In today's show, we are talking all about windows and we are talking about the styles and the history. We're talking about the glass, but we can't forget to talk about color. It's very important when it comes to your window selection. And with the Anderson windows, we offer a lot of different colors. Absolutely, you have anywhere from white to black. We have the browns, bronzes, teratones. There's even a green color. And the color says a lot about the style of your house, I think. And Kayla, right now, what are probably the most common colors that people are picking when it comes to trends? I would definitely think people are doing the black all the time because you have this modern movement which has a black frame, usually with white siding. The farmhouse look goes with the black windows. We still do have plenty of people doing the, the traditional colors or white if you don't want as much contrast, but a lot of people love high contrast, the whites and blacks, and so that's really popular. And when it comes to your windows, there are ways to add to that architectural look of your home, and that could be with the simple addition of grills. Absolutely. So again, that goes with the architectural style of your home, and there are lots of different types. Right behind us what we have is a prairie style or a colonial. 
There's plenty of other options like a tall fractional, short fractional, we have diamond, so many different style options. And don't forget about Anderson's custom window color option as well as custom grills. They can do diamond patterns, circles, any sort of custom grill style, and these colors. I mean, take a look, you have the creams, the browns, but you also have these reds, greens, and even some bright blue colors. So don't forget to have a lot of fun with your windows. Well, Kayla, we've talked about bringing the outside in and the inside out. And I, you, we have to say one of the greatest tools that we use today would be slider doors or glass doors to do that. Absolutely. With the trends in today's world, we're doing almost all the backsides of houses glass, whether that's windows, sliding doors, folding doors. I mean, all you see is glass to take advantage of all of the amazing views we have around here, too. Yeah, Frank Lloyd Wright loved to bring the outside in or attempted to do it. He didn't have the windows we got today. I think he'd be very proud of us. I would think so. And there's so many different types of doors that you can do in these applications. So. One of the popular ones is what's behind us here is that. the sliding door. So that's where the panels slide to one side or the other. And this one happens to be eight by eight. A huge door and for maybe a thousand, fifty, hundred dollars, we're talking about bringing a lot more outside in or inside out. You know, comparing that to our standard, which is a six foot eight tall by six foot wide, sitting right next to each other, you would never imagine just a little over a foot would make that big of a difference, but it is astonishing. And it's got argon gas in it. It's thermal paint. It's a very efficient application. We love those slider doors and we're really excited that they're getting bigger. Then there's also atrium doors. There is, you know, sliders have their place for when you don't want to take up space in the house okay. for a swinging door, mm -hmm. but atriums are great. A lot of people like the elegance that an atrium door brings to your home. So we do atriums are a swinging door. You could do a three foot door like that. You could do a six foot atrium where one panel is fixed and one panel swings. Then we move to the French door concept. Yes. I love the French doors. A lot of people even love to add grills to these just for that more uh, traditional look. And the French is where both doors are gonna open. So if you have that space to a veranda or a screened in porch or to a, um, the, the front side of a lake home, those oh, are really yeah. great options there. And, and again, for maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars, you can do a lot of things with doors that are gonna enhance the outside to the inside or the inside to the outside. We're excited about these door options. So Kayla, you're telling me that all of these glass options are options in today's new home? They absolutely are. I mean, the, the amount of possibilities is endless. You can do so many different glass styles and colors like we had talked about. Yeah, boy, you, and you, you, you can get a window in this color? Absolutely. I'm I mean, in. who wouldn't want that? I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> There's so many. It's really fun, the possibilities with windows today. Really wow. You know what? There's a lot of information on windows and doors, and I hope you found this really, really fun. We did. Windows are so important and it's the one component in a home that you not only see from the inside, but you see it from the outside as well. Yeah. And one thing I love too, Elizabeth, is when we start talking about these subjects and we start talking about glass, you start looking at other things in the home that you wouldn't necessarily think of as having glass. So just look at these decorative doorknobs that homeowners can pick. Or the accent tile that they're doing on the backsplashes, showers, you can see the glass pieces in there. Izzy, how are you feeling? Uh, you know, safety glasses from here on out. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, JR, would you close? Yeah, as always, guys, we want to thank you for spending part of your day with us. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please just pick up the phone, give us a call, visit the website below, come in any one of our glass doors. We'd love to show you around how to incorporate any of these into your new homes. Okay. I think uh, that was, I'm glad that was tempered too. Hey, just in case. Let me, let me get the door for you. Let's see. Door here. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That looks like a map. They're so pretty. Oh. Oh. Guys, I, I don't, uh... <laughs> there, there's some Advil downstairs. I would love to see him just turn around and walk into it again when he does. <laughs> <laughs>